Marissa with the Umbrian Sewists. Thanks for joining me today. It's great to be back. Um, I returned yesterday from my trip to the US, hence why I look a little exhausted. Um, it was quite the journey home, even longer than it should have been. Uh, due to the fact that um, when we arrived at Heathrow Terminal 5, which is the worst airport ever, in my opinion, um, because Terminal 5 at Heathrow is for British Airways and it's the newest terminal. I think it's probably, I left in 2011 and it couldn't have been more than two years old when I left. So what is that? So 2009, so 14 years maximum, 12 to 14 years old. And um, it's like way too small for the number of people and the number of flights because you're always taking buses sort of to and from, which is extremely annoying. And so we landed and we were waiting for 30 minutes for buses to arrive to take us to the terminal because we were parked in some middle of nowhere location. That caused us to miss our flight to Rome and they told us that our options were fly to Munich, have a layover and then fly to Rome or fly to Rome the next day. Both options infuriated me because in fact our flight to Rome was delayed and actually we had like 45 or 50 minutes to get to it but they refused to let us go through. Anyway, we spent the day in an airport hotel. We did take a taxi or a Uber to Windsor and had to wander around but of course we were exhausted from the jet lag and it was basically a nightmare. So I arrived yesterday, a day late, or more than 24 hours late. And I'm happy to be home. Um, but the trip to Seattle was lovely in the sense that we did tons of stuff. Um, it's definitely, it, we did a lot more because my son's seven and you kind of have to like keep anyone who like the seven or eight year old, you have to keep them busy. So I ran around like a crazy person. I tried to help my parents as much as possible. My dad's 83, my mom's 76, but she has Alzheimer's. And so it's not too bad yet, but it's definitely substantially worse than when I was there in February. And so I just tried to help as much as possible. I did um, basically all the cooking and washing dishes. So I'm exhausted basically. And I didn't sleep well the whole two weeks, which definitely takes its toll. But um, my son had a wonderful time with his cousins. He's kind of like at the age now, whereas the last time we were there, he was still like a baby. And so they just had a load of fun together. His youngest, so there's two girls, one's um, 13 and the other's 11. So Lucy, who's the younger one, um, and he really got on well and they're quite similar in personality. So it was lovely to see them sort of bond and um, and create that relationship, which, you know, they haven't had. So yes, it was a lovely trip. Um, you know, it was a bit sad as it is to see your parents age, but it was lovely. But I am more than thrilled to be home because Seattle is chaotic. The traffic, the people, the noise, and um, it's definitely, not what I'm used to. And I think that contributed to just being exhausted. But um, I bought quite a lot of stuff, which is probably not a surprise to anyone who has watched my channel. But this time it's more varied in terms of what I bought. So I wanted to share that with you today. And then after this video, sorry, I just got bit by a horsefly and it's swelling badly. I hope it was a horsefly because if it was a bee of any sort, I'm allergic. So we'll soon find out um, because I will have to stop the video, go to the hospital. Anyway, let's hope not. So, um, yeah, so I did purchase quite a few things, but like I said, it's more varied. So I think on my last trip, I bought a lot more fabric, but one thing I will say is, holy cow, everything is so expensive in Seattle. Now I realize that it could just be Seattle and the rest of the US or other parts of the US are not as expensive, but Seattle is insane. Um, I felt poor the entire time I was there. Um, everything is, I, I just shocked. Like for example, ice cream, because obviously I have a seven year old, so we bought quite a bit of ice cream. Like ice cream at a, not a fancy place for like a small, we're talking like $7. 
because of course you've got all the tax and then everywhere you go, people want to tip, even if literally they're like skiving you something, not like serving you or anything. Anyway, so I was shocked. So anyway, and, price, and fabric was, you know, like I can get amazing fabric here in Europe for a lot less. So I really only bought things that were on sale or things that were sort of somewhat unique. And I bought a few things my son picked out that I have, you know, haven't seen here. And um, yeah, and so that was sort of the approach. So I will start with, um, I went on to, I went to a quick, a quick trip to um, a really lovely fabric store called Pacific Fabric. Um, and they definitely sell all of like the brands and it's not cheap in general, but um, I bought this fabric in a blue colorway the last time I was there on their like reduced rack. It is like a designer fabric, although I'm not sure which one. It's a double gauze, but it's absolutely gorgeous quality. And um, yeah, I bought the blue colorway the last time. This is obviously sort of like a, I don't wanna say like a whiny Bordeaux color. And I just absolutely loved it. And I bought three yards of this because I thought I could um, make something, you know, more than just a shirt. Um, or actually I thought what I had in mind was like almost like an overshirt, not shacket, but like a, like the cam Helen, Co Helen's closet Cameron, which I really enjoyed making. Um, but if I made again in this, I would definitely lengthen it, but that was kind of what I had in mind and it's not a wide fabric. So I got three just to make sure I had enough, but yeah, super lovely quality. And this was 1098 a yard. I suspect when it was full price, it was well over 20. Um, so yeah, good, good price, I think. And just beautiful quality. I can tell it's really, really good quality. So yeah, so that's that. So really nice. Um, and then I did pick up some fat quarters. Um, again, they have all of the lovely, I'm sorry, I keep itching my arm. Um, they do have all the lovely, um, brands like Rifle Paper Company, Cotton and Steel and some of those. And so, um, I just kind of picked through some of the pre-cut fat quarters and I got these absolutely gorgeous Christmas ones and these were all I think four dollars per fat quarter so not super cheap this is cute like Christmas sweaters and I absolutely fell in love with this one which is like Christmas nutcracker-y soldier -y kind of guys on a I can't tell if it's a really dark blue background and then I got these cute snowmen and then I got this sort of candy striped um, which I thought went really nice with the, um, the sweaters and it probably goes nice with all of them. Um, so yeah, so I got those and then I bought, um, some pretty floral ones. So I got this one, which is really pretty. I think this is a, um, no idea what brand, oh, uh, Moda. This is a Moda. And then I got this pretty one, which is on a sort of a dark green background. And then I got this lovely one here. And I'll probably use these for like bag linings. Uh, no idea, I just liked them, so I got them. Okay, so then the next fabrics that I purchased, and I'll actually just go through all the things I purchased from Joanne Fabrics. Um, this is another thing I purchased. Now, this to Americans is a insulated wine glass, but I drink iced coffee in the summer and it annoys me when it, the condensation like gets all over my desk. So I bought it. So this is not wine. Even if it was, it would be okay, but it is nine in the morning. So I'm just saying it's my iced coffee. So I bought a bunch of, uh, well, a few fabrics at Joanne Fabrics. And they're actually all for my son, so I didn't buy any for myself. So the first one I bought is this sort of camouflage um, jersey. Uh, it's in their, like, it's their children's range. Um, to be honest, the quality I don't really like. Um, however, he wears clothes for such a short time. It doesn't have to be the highest quality. Um, because, yeah, it's not going to last too long. Anyways, he wanted sort of a hoodie out of this. And I got this, which is like a waffly knit for the lining. So I thought those would look nice together and for the cuffs and things like that. This is, this is, I believe 95% cotton, 5% spandex. And then this is 
probably mostly polyester. It's very, very soft and stretchy, so it will sort of work quite well. Um, but yeah, I got those for my son. I'm just gonna put that here. And then this I was quite pleased with. This is like a a twill or a canvas. And um, and I, yeah, really like this. This is also in that kid's um, sort of range. And I'm gonna make him some pants with that. Some sort of cargo-y type pant. Um, but yeah, that I was quite pleased with. Unfortunately, they didn't have any other sort of patterned or solids in this um, this fabric because it is it does feel quite good quality. So anyway, so I'll enjoy making some pants for him out of that. And then the last one that I got for him is this fur. Um, and what I quite liked about it is it's sort of furry on the outside, but then it's actually fleecy on the inside because sometimes the inside of these fur, faux fur, they're quite scratchy. And um, anyway, yeah, so he picked that out. I don't remember how much I got of this and apologies, the pricing has eluded me on a lot of it, but I think I got one and a half um, for him. And I'll probably make some sort of sweater, hoodie. I was gonna make a bomber jacket, but they all seem to be made out of woven and um, possibly inserting a zip into this could be a nightmare. So anyways, he'll be happy with something out of that. I also bought, that is shedding big time, um, a couple of patterns. So I did buy this bomber jacket pattern for him. These were all on sale for $1.99, as everybody um, who doesn't live in the US is always jealous about their sales. Um, but this, and I thought this was good, but then I, when I got it home, I realized it is lined. And um, I don't wanna line a stretchy fabric. Lining a woven fabric is fine. So I will probably make that for him, just not out of that blue sort of camouflage. Um, this is, yeah, it says it's a lined zip front jacket um, with neck sleeve and hem band. So yeah, traditional uh, bomber jacket. I don't think I'd color block it. I think I'd go all sort of one color. So maybe like that version. Um, so that's the first one. The second one is this. And I really got this, well, actually this is just the men's, this is the adult. And I got it for this to make my husband because I had difficulty with that tropical, um, the tropical shirt, not difficulty. It's just that um, it's way too big in the shoulders. And so I just thought I'd try another one before I do any major um, alterations. And that was $1.99, so I thought, why not? And then the last one I got for myself. And this is a, yeah, quite a nice um, sort of sweater with some different options. This one has a hood. This one is just sort of, I don't wanna say a cowl neck. And then this one is, this is buttons. So you can do it zip or buttons. And I actually quite liked, well, I quite like this one. Again, I probably wouldn't color block, um, but I also quite like this one, which is just sort of an interesting sweater. So I got that one. And yeah. I always forget that you have to like look at the sizes here because they do them in two bands, but that should probably be fine for me. And I got my son the right one, that's uh, for older children. So I got those as well. Um, and then I got, just for fun, um, these were on clearance and I thought they were super cool. So these were on clearance for like $3. And the idea is that this, um, will give you enough to make essentially two hats. So I printed off the directions. So you get enough to make one hat in this sort of color version, like gradient, gradiated, gradiated? I can't speak. And then this is the second one. So you can actually make one hat out of this. And I bought two, because they were $3.97. I thought that was quite fun. I thought I'd have another go at making, doing knitting. Um, I thought it could be a fun project to do in the winter, so I have no intention of starting this anytime soon. And I did get a We Are Knitters kit for a hat uh, a few years ago. And admittedly, I still have the yarn. I sort of unwound it. Um, wow, you can't see it. Whew. Ouch. I think it is just a horse fly. Anyways, you're probably not interested. But, um... I did get the hat kit and I just couldn't get the tension right. So I am gonna have another go. And that knit, that wool is wool. This is obviously um, 
acrylic. So anyways, I'm obviously out of practice. I'm rambling. Apologies. Um, I will keep going because um, I've got a number of things to show you. So then the next one I did get is um, a whole bunch of fabric or fabric threads. Um, I just, it was like three for two. And so I just got some of the big spools of the Gutterman thread in sort of standard colors. So I got white, black, blue, and cream. The colors sort of I use the most. Um, just to have those as spares. I will just chuck them in my thread drawer now. Save me doing that later. Um, and that is, oh no, and I did buy some interfacing, which is super uninteresting. I bought fusible fleece. I bought sort of the thin, really, really lightweight that I may use in uh, collars and things like that. And then I bought some real thick foam, again, with bag making in mind, because um, this is just, it's easier for me to buy this in person because I never really quite know what I'm buying. There's so many different types of interfacing and these are sort of the standard ones I use all the time. Um, yeah, so I think that's it from Joann's. Then I went to Hobby Lobby, um, and I bought actually quite a lot of things there. Um, let me just get this out because I, I won't bore you because I actually bought loads of different buttons. Um, because buttons are tricky for me. Um, I can't buy any of the cute fun buttons that, um, you know, from like Ethel and Joan and all of the um, companies. And the same goes for labels. Like in the UK, you got you guys have some beautiful like button companies and label companies, but because of Brexit, um, I can't buy any of them because I then end up paying essentially like double, which I wouldn't want to do. They're already not cheap. So, and buttons are tricky to buy online. So Hobby Lobby was having sale and so I went a bit mad um, and bought a bunch of buttons. So I'll just share some of them with you. Um, these were really pretty. I got these, these are sort of wood buttons. And I tried to get eight of everything because I find that, you know, with, with um, shirts and things that typically need eight. So I got these as well. Um, I got these, which I thought were super pretty. The sort of little flowers in them. And these were all on sale for 99 cents, I wanna say, um, which was a really great deal. These pinky. I got a couple packets of these, which are sparkly clear. I got these, which I thought were quite interesting. There's a lot. Um, I got these sparkly again. These, I really like these matte ones. I got some of those last time I was there in February. Actually, I used these for my son's shirt. And I only had, they only had one. I got some red. I got some of these, the blacky gray. Some standard black and did I share these? These I thought were pretty. And yeah, and I got these as well. Actually, I think I got these at Joanne's. Can't remember. I then also picked up some fun threads for some fun top stitching on things. I picked up some funky bias binding. Again, all of these were on sale for like 99 cents, so I just thought it would be a bit of fun, so I picked up some of this. Um, what else did I get? I bought some Wonder Tape, because I absolutely love this for labels. I always put the stick the label on and then sew it. Um, Fray check. Anyone, I need help. Anyone who has any suggestions, this video is long, apologies. But whenever I use fray check, so I basically, I sew the buttonhole, squirt fray check on the front and the back, wait, then cut it. It still frays. Am I doing that wrong? This says, basically unscrew the cap, 
put a small amount on, wait 15, 30 minutes, that's it. If you have any advice on how to get better results, please let me know. Um, then I bought some standard blue. Again, this was 99 cents. And I got this zipper to match a piece of fabric that I will show you now. Um, oh, I also bought some Mod Podge. This was, um, I think, on sale as well. But these are fun. I like Mod Podge. I got some glossy and matte in the small sizes because I had bigger ones, but I find like I just don't use it and it goes hard. So these I got. And yeah, so now onto the fabric. So I got a few fabrics. They were all on sale, like I said. Um, and yeah, so I'm quite pleased with them. They were really, really reasonably priced. The first one is this, which is a lovely sort of rib knit um, in this like sagey green with the white flowers. I really liked that. Um, I don't know how much I got of this. Maybe two yards, one and a half. Um, no idea what I'm gonna make with it, but I just really liked it. I thought it was super pretty. And I do like rib knit. This next one I know was on sale for $3 a yard. And I just loved it. It's white with all these speckles of different colors. I think I got three yards of this. It is quite see-through, but I love this. It's 100% cotton. And um, for a t-shirt in the summer, it's lovely. And um, yeah, it doesn't matter in the summer if you're wearing something that's a little see-through on the top. But yeah, I got three yards. That was $3 a yard. So just like really great price. So pretty happy with that. No idea what I'm gonna make with it. I then got this, this was a remnant. Um, this is a jersey, sort of tie dye. I thought this was super fun for a t-shirt. 95% cotton, 5% spandex. Don't know what I'm gonna make with it. Probably a t-shirt, like I said. Sorry for the repetitiveness. Um, but yeah, I was pleased with that. This next one is a lovely French Terry. Again, this was $3 a yard. Um, it's incredibly soft. I just really liked it. I thought it was really pretty. I might make a South Bank sweater dress, um, but I got three meters of this. Um, and again, yeah, French Terry, super soft. I think it's quite wide, 60, 58 or 60 inches. Um, again, a great deal on that one. Then I got this, which I'm absolutely in love with. I know exactly what I'm gonna make. It's a needle cord, and I just loved the colors. I think it's a navy blue, dark blue background, or maybe black, I don't know. I'm definitely making a pinafore, the um, Waves and Wild Penelope pinafore, which I've made before and I love, so I'm gonna make that. And then the last one was this cute little remnant of quilting cotton in this cute mushroom. And I thought I would do something and that's why I got the pink zip. So I am trying to move through all of this quickly. Then lastly, I bought some supplies. Um, there was a cool video or a, um, Instagram reel um, that Melly Sows did that was talking about school supplies that are useful for sewing. And I thought, very cool. Some of these I already use. So for example, I like these pencils for tracing. I trace all of my patterns. So I find these pencils, these retractable pencils useful. So I bought some of those because everything was on sale for the back to school. But I did get these, which again, I have, I had some sort of cheaper ones. Um, but I thought that I would get these. Again, they were on sale. Um, they're friction pens, so they come off with heat or friction. And so I, um, I got two packs of those. And then the last one, which I thought was cool, which I haven't used before, are these ultra clean washable markers, which again, because you've got all the different colors, you can really pick the right color for your fabric. Um, and yeah, they come out in the wash. So I got those as well. Lastly, I ordered these on Amazon before I arrived. Not too exciting, but maybe for some they are. This, 
So this um, goes over the iron. Now I saw, I can't remember who it was in the Great British Sewing Bee use this this year, but um, it goes over the iron to sort of protect it, protect the fabric without having to put like a cloth over it. Um, and so I bought one of those. So I, I, cause I'd never seen them before. And so, yeah, I guess this goes over the handle somehow. I haven't tried it on my iron, hopefully it works. And then I bought some of this iron cleaner because I'm always in search of something that would be really good at cleaning irons. So not exciting, but useful. Okay, so that is it. I'm also going to um, record another video, I think, with my plans and um, I'll share in that video some pictures. I took some pictures of my father and my son in their matching shirts and maybe some other pictures from my trip. Um, but this video is already quite long, so I don't wanna bore anyone with that in this video. But anyways, yeah. What do you think of my, oh no, I forgot the best part. Well, not the best part, but well, to me it is. So I love labels and all of the lovely labels that you get most parts of the world, like little rosy cheeks and all of the other, I can't get because obviously I'm gonna be paying customs and that makes them really ridiculous. So I ordered a bunch of labels when I was in the US from a lovely lady um, who makes labels. Um, and her, her name is Sarah Hartz. Um, and her labels are sold here in Europe as well. This was a free label I got from my order because I bought quite a few and I will share them with you. So the first ones, um, and I quite like that they're quite small. So these are the first ones. These are, um, and the prices were really good as well because sometimes I get the label price, they're getting a bit crazy. So this is um, one of them. There's, I think, three different designs, but they're sort of like, I think they're supposed to look like quilts. So that's the first one. I think they come eight labels in a packet, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, those are the first ones. You can see some of the other designs. Um, the next ones were sort of love hearts, um, as you can see here. And again, they're all quite small, which I liked. Um, so you can see it says for you on the front and then just a plain heart on the back. And I believe there's um, for me, handmade. There's a few different um, ones there. The next, I got two of these because they're sort of really cool space, but, um, but not just space. So there's like, get out a couple of these are fun. You've got this, which could be the moon. You've got a rocket ship. You've got the sun. Um, I think that might, and then a shooting star. And I got two packs of those because I thought those were quite fun. Um, so I got, yeah, two of those. Then I got these sort of gemstones, which are cute. Let's see, I'll show you one of those. Yeah, so you've got like a heart and then another one. Now those are fun. And then I got some just purple hearts, which you can see there. Purple, blue hearts. Um, and I believe, yeah, I really like these because I love plants and I thought these were super cute. These are like little pot plants. I thought these were lovely for like bags and um, things like that as well. A little cactus. And then the last one are these, which I really liked, which say love. The lovely different colors there in the heart. Now I am done. So we're just about at 30 minutes. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I guess I did buy quite a bit of stuff. Um, and yeah, it was a fun variety of things that I purchased. And yeah, I hope that some of that was of interest to you. Uh, any comments on buttonholes, advice, please share. If you have any other comments, have you used any of the things that I've purchased? Like, have you used this cool thing? 
Have you used anything else? Do you have any advice? Please let me know. I love chatting with you all in the comments. I do have some new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining the channel. I hope it's of interest and um, yeah, thank you so much for your support. I hope you're all well and um, yeah, I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, bye.